What the hell was that? A deserted manor house and a church of ghostly monks await the most haunted team as we travel to Northumberland. Fielding, and this week I brought my team to a place that was built for peace and tranquility. But now, after many, many years, it has become a fearful place to tread. Welcome to Most Haunted and to Brinkburn Priory. The beautiful 12th century priory of Brinkburn was founded in the reign of Henry I as an Augustinian priory. It sits picturesquely by a bend in the River Coquet. And it is its proximity to the Northumberland's border with Scotland that has given rise to some of the many ghostly tales associated with this place. The whole of this area is said to be haunted by a group of monks that were slain during the 14th century raids by the Scottish. Not only can they be seen, but their ghostly chants can be heard over and over again, but only in the dead of night. The religious order at Brinkburn was dissolved in 1536 and the church fell into disrepair. During the church's renovation, workmen tell of unexplained phenomena. Dark, shadowy figures have been seen in the church and wandering the monastic building opposite. Deep, moaning voices have also been witnessed many times. And of course, there's always the possibility of bumping into a dark, hooded phantom who is said to inhabit this foreboding place. The manor house that adjoins the church became a home after the priory's closure, when the Fenwick family took control of the estate but today the building is a mere shadow of its former self. It's easy to imagine the hustle and bustle of everyday life that must have occurred here in years gone by. Although now very empty and void of life, this place still echoes with the past, trying to break through to the present. There are stories of a dark entity that lurks in the cellar, which likes to push people over. It has been seen regularly, usually accompanied by a strange amorphous mist. A grey lady has been seen climbing the stairs. A serving girl, possibly Victorian, has been seen walking through the walls at the entrance hall. And upstairs, a monk was seen reading from a large Bible, seemingly ignoring all who pass by. There are also reports from locals of a woman being seen at an upper storey window when the house is completely empty. The lives of Brinkburn, from the families that own this secluded house to the staff that serve them, are the main focus for historian Leslie Smith. Brinkburn is absolutely lovely and nestling in a green valley very close to the Scottish border and has been subject to some really vicious attacks from borderers crossing over and taking goods from this place. In the 16th century, one particular family had a great impact on this place, and that was the Fenwick family. Later on, the Cadogans came here and remained here till very recently indeed. So really, we've got two strong names to think of later tonight. As well as that, there are servants, of course, in large number here. We should think about the lives that have been, not just in terms of family, but in terms of all of those other people who would have visited here too. And maybe when they came here to Brinkburn, they wanted to remember this place, and so perhaps some of them in spirit stayed. Mm. 
Rarely do we investigate somewhere that can be described as two locations in one. Something I wish to discuss with parapsychologist Dr Kieran O'Keefe. What I love about this location is we've got two locations side by side. We've had locations before where we've been quite close, but these two literally are next door. It's like, you know, semi-detached property, isn't it? Huge, but one a church and one this sort of beautiful manor house, this priory. I think from an investigator point of view, it's perfect. It means that we can run simultaneous vigils. We can have a vigil in the church and a vigil in this particular building and know that there's no sensory leakage between the two. There's no possibility of people misinterpreting sounds from the other vigil as being paranormal. So from an investigator point of view, that's perfect. What do you think, um, or where do you think the crew are going to be most um, fearful this evening? Do you think it is going to be possibly the church, you know, doing sort of calling out for, for dead people in churches can be a little bit creepy? I guess there is that aspect, yeah, which I didn't think of, to be honest. Also, uh, the altar area is... Uh, it's not naturally creepy. You don't look at it and go, oh, I'm going to be scared. But remember also there, there are a couple of graves on the altar and all, you know, all it takes is for one of the vigils to sit round or sit even on one of the graves. Huge suggestion effect and people start to feel creeped out by it. So, yes, I expect that, perhaps, if they start focusing on the graves. Also, one wing of this particular building uh, when you walk through it, it's, it has a little bit of a maze-like feel about it. You know, there are lots of doorways off it and lots of other rooms. And I'm wondering if we're going to get a lot of corner-of-the-eye phenomena. Well, let's hope that we get apparitions um, galore this evening. It would be fantastic. With that hope in mind, Kieran and I are joined by medium Chris Conway. I'm hoping that he might shed a bit more light on the supposed ghosts of Brinkburn Priory as we begin our lit walk around in the church. It's beautiful. I didn't know it was this big. <laughs> it's huge. It's deceptive, isn't it? Yeah. It's absolutely beautiful. Those stained glass windows are absolutely wow. gorgeous. Look at the colours. Do you know, it's very rare that we're actually allowed inside a church, it isn't is. it? Yeah. And instantly I want to do this. What is that about? And whisper, whisper. yeah. And whisper. Yeah. I'm the same Going scared to, to speak. Childhood. It's amazing. I beautiful. absolutely love it. It's absolutely gorgeous. So, are you picking up lovely, wonderful religious things? Or yes. Are you, picking up, so you are, yeah, are you picking pretty, up something pretty, different? Pretty obvious for the, the surroundings that we're in, but as soon as I've walked in, I've picked up two religious figures. I've picked up a monk, but I've also picked up which I'm a nun, which is quite surprising for me because I, I associate places like this with monks. Yeah. But I've picked up a monk and I've picked up a nun a as nun. well. Let's walk further down. I don't know if the monk's name, but I have the, the, the nun's name is Mary. Right. And can you see them? Are they sorry, Maria. Sorry, sorry. Maria. Maria, Maria. Is, is, the, is the nun's name. So the, the nun is stood where? The nun is standing over here in between these two pillars. Which ones? These two here? Here. OK. And basically, she's standing. And she's welcoming us. Oh, is she? That basically introduced herself to me. Yeah. Um, I, I picked it up as Mary, but it's actually Maria is, is the nun's name. Um, the monk, I don't know anything about him because he's he's basically he's just standing watching us. Okay. okay. And do you do you see where he's standing watching? Yes, he's standing up here. Up there. Yeah. Okay. And do you do you, do you have a sense of why they're here? Are they, I mean, are they haunting here? Very much so, but they're, they're also interested. In us. in us. They're interested in what we're doing here. Basically, what we're doing here goes against what, what they've been taught. That they've been taught that we, we shouldn't actually be trying to communicate with them. But at the same time, they're curious because they come, they come back and visit here quite a lot. And I think they would, more so than the, the monk, Maria has come in and she maybe, she, she'll maybe visit maybe, I'd say, if you're lucky, twice a year. Whereas the monk's here all, all the, the time. time. And he's he had a bit... I'd be surprised if the monk isn't seen in here quite often. And can he interact with, with us? I think he probably could. At the moment, he's not. At the moment, he's very much... I don't know... 
if disgust is the word, but it's ve the, the, the look he's given us is very much of disdain. He's somebody that's not, not happy with what we've Did you hear that? Tapping. Right by you, Chris. It's very gentle, but it's there. Is there any time period with this monk? I've not got a year for him yet. Can you see what no, colour uh, his robes are? He's, he's wearing brown robe. The brown, brown robe. He's Can you see brown. anything tied around his waist? What sort of thing is dangling down by his... Because they had some sort of yeah. tie, didn't they, or Aye. rope? It's basically, as you've just described it, it's basically a, a rope. rope, yeah. There's nothing on the end no. of it, no, nothing, no nothing ornaments? I've just been given a year by the, by the, the nun. Oh, okay. 1836. 1836. 1836. So Maria is what was giving you, that's when yeah. she was here. Yeah, which, uh, that's why I'm very interested that you're here in Rustlin. I'm just wondering if you're maybe here in the Nun. Chris believes we're in the presence of two spirits, a monk and a nun. Will either of these spirits make themselves known to the rest of the team during our investigation tonight? Oh, <laughs> What the hell was that? Welcome back to Most Haunted and our investigation of Northumberland's secluded Brinkburn Priory. During our walk around of the Priory's chapel, medium Chris Conway picked up on what he believes to be the ghosts of a nun and a monk. What more will he pick up as we continue our lit walk around on the ground floor of the Priory's Manor House? This is really, really creepy. Yeah. I mean, I really do think there's something very strange about places that have no furniture in them, there's no pictures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just got this horrid kind of mm -hmm. sad, it's empty It's very bare feel. as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. What, what I don't like about it as well, talking psychically, medium, um, I'm getting a clash. Oh. Because um, I'm still picking up religious sort of, sort of things, but I'm also picking up more as we were walking in, there was a Victorian, well, I'm going to say Victorian, he had the beard, he um, had a, a jacket on with a, it was like a sort of shiny um, waistcoat, not shiny, should be. Um, like a satiny which, type thing? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. but I'm, I'm assuming Victorian, that's what it looks like to me. Anything on his head? Keep, or? Keep, no, I didn't have anything, no. he's heading up. Um, and he was there, he's, 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 he disappeared almost as quick as I seen him. Um, but again, there's that sort of clash between the two as we walk in here. Okay. So you've still got the religious side, yes. and then you've got this Victorian, yeah. normal looking guy. Yeah. And but how old would you put him at? I would have said mid 40s. Mid 40s? Mid -40s. And is he haunting here, or are we just seeing a memory I, of him being here? At this moment in time, I think it's just. I th again, it's, it's very much. As, as if the spirits in this bit seem to be fascinated by us. Oh, really? Yeah. They, they, it's as if it's like when you're maybe filming and somebody in the public's maybe walking by, and it's very much like that, where they're sort of, oh. yeah, and, and which is which I find quite quite fascinating the way they're fascinated yeah. by us. Here, the atmosphere feel totally changes. It's even MD, it's not a medium, I'm sure you can feel the different atmospheres you walk in here. I hate it in here. Very. What, what I'm getting down this bit here and in here as well, it's very much like dead bodies, as if this is where they would bring somebody that died, bring them down here until they would then bury them. Oh. And that's very much the feeling I'm getting down right. here. It's like walking into a mortuary. It's that sort of I suppose because feeling. it's, well, this makes sense, I suppose, because it's so cold down mm. here, wouldn't it? And you said about the atmosphere change. 
there's a genuine atmosphere change, as in you're right, there's a drop in temperature by two degrees, and also there's a significant drop in humidity as right. well. There's about three, four percent drop, which means if people feel as though they're getting touched, okay. that could just be down to the drop in humidity. Okay, okay something to remember yeah. Yeah. Later, later on. on. Okay. Okay. So anybody haunting in this particular area, or is it, again, just a feeling? It's energy, it's right. very much, but the, the, there's, oh, there's spirit energy here. At this point in time, there's nobody here, but there has been spirits, and it wouldn't surprise me if, as it gets later on in the night, that this would be active, very active, this bit. <laughs> Just the thought of it makes me go like Bats and down here, not good. Should we go back, back up into the main part of the house? Let's just get out of here as quickly as we can. Chris's belief that the manor house, as well as the chapel, is haunted by the spirits of times past validates our decision to investigate this place. But do any of these spirits ring true with historian Leslie Smith? Ooh. Oh, that's better. Where's that Leslie Smith? There you are. Keeping out of that bit. Oh, it's horrid down there. It is, isn't it? How are we doing? Really well. Yeah. Um, again, uh, lots of layers of time here yeah. coming through. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, when we were in the church, you know, that magnificent church, mm -hmm. and um, you talked about the monk. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. That's pretty, I hate to say obvious, but oh, obviously of holy orders mm. and um, the monks are here. Mm. Much later period from the monks is the nun that you describe. Um, it wasn't a place at that point that was in the sense of an enclosed order or anything like that, but it was certainly a place of worship and had gone through some considerable changes to rebuild the place in the Victorian period. I don't wonder that a holy woman would be here in the name Maria. Do you hear that? Certainly did. Wow. Wonder that a holy woman would be here in the name Maria. Certainly did. Wow. Maria. And the name Maria, I wonder if she was answering, um, is a holy name, so I'm not at all surprised to have that. Then when we come over into the building proper and you get the sense of Victorian gentlemen, again, I'm not surprised within the main manor house because we've got Victorian activity here. Harold, again, people think that's a Victorian name, certainly not, there was a... Can you hear all this? Harold. This seems like a response when we're saying yeah. names. It's a real have you got yeah. that, Matt? I hope you have. That was really clear. Yeah. But that in turn is an ancient name. And don't let's forget that we think of this as being the sort of rebuild Victorian period. But actually, people have been here for centuries in one form or another in the manor house part, mm -hmm. which we're in now, including servants, including, I say, servants. Those names are all also ancient names that could be connected to the monastery as well. And this would have formed part of the monastic um, buildings here, of which there would be substantial number. So we're on the ground of it. Mm -hmm. so. What about the, the, the fact that Chris said that bodies might have been stored so in there? We need to do a bit more work on that. What I'll do as a result of that is look at the layout of the buildings. We're going to see if any work was done here, which it would have been, um, in the way we would now describe as a hospital. It had another name then. So I need to do some work on that, but it's a fascinating thought. It's certainly cold and eerie enough to yeah. be a morgue. As we conclude the lit walk around, we are all aware of the sinister knocking that appears to encircle us. As we switch off the lights and turn on the night vision cameras, is this a foretaste of what awaits us tonight? Is that you tapping, Stu? No, we're not moving. I've got the camera. Anyway. Oh, sh <laughs> What's the <laughs> Oh, you <laughs> take me. Just to let you know that there is a mist in there that is surrounding you like crazy. No! As we ready our equipment and ourselves for the night-long investigation, Carl, keen to get things underway, ventures alone to the cellar, where Chris Conway picked up upon an overwhelming sense of death. Is. I've got to say, it's all in place. Everyone's had a bit of a heebie jeebies about it. Right. Okay. Right, I've only been here a very short time. I'm hearing bangings. The battery, the battery on this camera, the battery was I had 212 minutes because I logged it before I came out with this camera. 
I, it's now flashing saying that the, that the battery is going. I'm hearing bangs. That's the door. That's that metal door. Hello? While Carl continues his investigation of the cellar, Chris Conway, Leslie, Kieran and myself search for the presence of spirits on the ground floor of the house. Is there anybody here? The person who was banging before making the knocking noises, please can you make the noises again? There. Heard it. Heard it. Heard it. Very gentle, but it was there. Do you hear it, Kieran? I did hear a tap. Yeah. If there are spirit people here, if you used to live here or work here, please make yourself known to us now. No, I can hear. It's a really dull, yes, very thud quiet is. thud, thud, yeah. thud. You are here and you don't want me here. Do something to make me leave. Oh, that's in this room. That's in this. Hello? Hello? That's there. I'm just going to go and have a look. If anyone's hiding in there, I'll, I'll beat him up myself. I'll turn him into a ghost. Hello? No one in there. Okay, this is really amazing that... What the hell was that? Anyway. Oh, sh what was that? Hello? The cold really cold. Hello. Nothing in here. Nothing. Nothing. Chris, can you get any? Have you got anything? That huge stone office. There's a stone. We have just heard a noise like the sound of a stone hitting the stairs. The cold recall. You haven't touched that, have you? No. Do you want me to turn the torch off? Yeah, there's no heat source at all. So you won't get anything on the camera if you okay. can't film this. Okay. No heat source. Are you here? Can you hear us? Can you see us? Do we scare you? Listen. Listen. Low thoughts mm -hmm. and I heard it. But Unfortunately, due to health and safety constraints, we are unable to explore anywhere above the ground floor of this house. I've got to say, this, this, um, this door is quite not ominous, look, from a distance. Okay. It looks like it should be... The hell was that? It can't be coming from the ceiling. It, the, 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 the ceiling's wood. It's new. I can't believe that. I mean, there's nothing there. There's no one here. I'm on my own. With unexplainable events happening in the cellar and the ground floor of this house, both these areas warrant further investigation. But what these investigations bring forth, only time will tell. Turn the lights on. 
There you go. Welcome back to Most Haunted. We're investigating Brinkburn Priory in Northumberland. Believed to be haunted by the spirits of dead monks, this abandoned priory is giving us reason to investigate certain areas further. While Carl conducted a vigil in the cellar of the priory's manor house, he was witness to unexplained noises. And during an investigation of the ground floor, I got the distinct sense that we were not alone. Eager to investigate the cellar further, I ventured down there with Kieran and Chris Conway, while Carl, Stuart, Kath and Chris Burton investigate the Priory's church. Is anyone here? What the f***? That sounded like the organ. Is it, what's that, an organ? Yeah. yeah. <gasps> oh, my God! It's like a low bass. It did! I heard it over here. Stu? Yes, mate. Where are you? I'm over here. Can you go that side of the organ? I'm going to go this side, just to make sure no one's behind me. That just heard that again. Where? Was you two talking? No, no, not so word. It must have been. Yeah, Sounded. You'll hear. You'll hear. You'll hear yeah. it on his mic. There's nothing. All I've done is walk around here because I've looked at that. Sounded like a monk. If that makes any sense. There you go. While Carl continues to investigate the church, I've gone down to the cellar with Kieran and Chris Conway. How dark is this place? This is amazing. It's I mean, it's lovely. so, so dark. Ooh. Where does that go? Oh my! <laughs> it's absolutely freezing here. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I mean, we are it's... now. We're recording this show in August, um, and I know we haven't had the best summer, but my! <laughs> I mean, it's freezing in this whole place. Absolutely. And damp. Yeah, really horrible. Right, someone switched them on then, Carl. Someone's probably switched them on. Come on, there's no one there. Oh, the lights come on. The lights have come on. Mate, there's only one way them lights can come on, Carl. And there's a switch down the end there. There's no one there. Listen. What is that? Hey, and they're on low as well. There's, there's about six different settings for them, Carl. Did you hear that man? That's just not leaving. The reality is that. No, Carl, Carl, here, look. That setting there. There you go. So someone I heard it, I heard it, I heard it. Is there anybody here? Are there any spirits here with us now? Kieran's tummy. Or is it Chris's tummy? No, it's not saying Kieran's. It wasn't mine. Was it not? Hey? No, I looked. Are you it sure? Came from, it came from you, Kieran. It came from my ears coming from there. What? Ask again. Is there anybody here? If you're here, please make a noise. Can you make a noise, please? We've just lost power, haven't we, Kieran? Yeah, well, you, first of all, you said you just heard scratching sounds, and as you said that... The, the, uh... the, the power just went on the camera. Whoa. That's really heavy, to be honest. 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right, which one are you going there? I'm here. We're both on the camera. Let's do it right together. Right, let's split up again then. So shall Cap and I go down here now? If you want. With a camera trained on the light switch, Carl asks for the lights to be turned on again. Come on, if you're here, turn the lights on then. Open the gate, turn the lights on. There you go. <laughs> and we had the switch in. We had that in shot. Stuart's what? I'm a of the organ. I came up to the organ because I, th I heard something. Well, you're 50 foot from us, so you can't reach it. Like Carl before us, we too have experienced strange battery failure while investigating the cellar. Could this be linked in any way to the surges of power that Carl and Stuart are witnessing in the church? In order to get to the bottom of what it is that haunts the cellar and possibly the whole site, Kieran leads a team into the cellar while Carl, Stuart, Kath and myself monitor their progress on the CCTV cameras from the hub. What have you got, Chris? Same feeling I was getting earlier on. Still got the dead in here. The dead bodies, which you've had confirmed. Well, it's I've had confirmed dead bodies would have been kept in, in, in this very, part. Very much. Still trying to get that a name for you, Leslie. It's mm, still, okay. no, it's a, it's a whole, still all I'm getting is cards. Guys, um, <laughs> it's Carl here. Just to let you know that there is a mist in there that is surrounding you like crazy. Can you, can you sense dust in there? No. No. Can we can anybody see any dust? No. no. Not with a naked with a torch. Hi, Carl. We can't see any dust in the camera or with our naked eye. With the torches, can you see? It's a mist and it seems to be surrounding you all. He's one of the best things I think I've ever seen. He's not picking up the camera. Can you shine a torch again? Yeah. Can't see any dust. There's no There's sort tiny of little specks, but they're not like a mist. Can you shine it down towards the floor? Towards Chris's feet? Chris Conway. And over to Chris Burton. OK. Who are you talking to? Let me turn I'm still trying to... This, I'm getting this name still whispered in Sorry, my ear. Sorry, I'm just... That was the, the, the name I was trying to get you earlier on, but again, I'm just getting... It's like Cad. 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 Keep going. Cad. You're right, keep going. Come on. I think it's close enough. It's Cadogan. Cadogan. They're one of the main families here. Right. There's two big families here. Right. That's the name I've been getting the whispered Cadogan. since you asked for a son name earlier on. The spirits that are in this room, can you please contact us? Please touch one of us or make a noise. Let the other people in this group know that you're here. I know that you're here. Please let everybody else know you're here. Please leave them without any doubt of your presence. They're walking in about us and round mm. about us. They're all over us. Ooh. They're all over you know, us. I've got this horrible tingling in my legs. Yeah, I have. I don't know if it's because I'm pre the rats, but... No, they're walking. I don't mean over us as in toppies. I mean over us as in mm. all around us. Are they good or bad? A mixture. Like people are. I'm hearing it bang bang. Carl, are you still seeing the mist? Uh, no, the, the, the mist seems to have dissipated completely. The strange mist only adds to the mystery of what lurks in the cellar. What more will this cavernous void spew forth as our investigation continues? What's that? <laughs>
Welcome back to Most Haunted and our investigation into the abandoned Brinkburn Priory in Northumberland. We are currently investigating a cellar in the Priory's manor house, where we have just been witness to a strange mist that enveloped a team led by Kieran. Keen to explore this phenomena further, I lead Carl, Stuart and Kath back into the cellar, while the rest of the team monitor us through the CCTV cameras in the hub. Do you feel like there's anything, Carl? Feel what? Do you feel like there's anything in here? What do you mean? In these bits, this bit here. I don't know. Sure, you almost walked straight into you. I can That's see. Right. What was that? What the hell was that? What was that noise? <laughs> Where was it from? It's coming from in that corridor. Did you, you hear it? Yes, definitely. I heard it. If I oh, I, it was a growl. It was big bangs. No, it's a growl. No, but there was two knocking noises as well at the same time. What is Something it? went bang! I know, we heard it. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Whistle, whistle. There, there. Is it? It's between me and you. I mean, I couldn't hear anything. Oh, I don't like it up here. I really don't like it. I think we should leave. You can't go anywhere. Why? We've only just started. Yeah, but it's dangerous. Event. Hi, Kieran. Can one or two of you move back along the corridor to uh, where the camera is? Because we've just seen something. Uh, go past the lens. So just a couple of people near the camera. How was that, Karen? Okay, that's good. Just stay there for a second. Just for five seconds. Is that you tapping, Stu? No, we're not moving. I've got the camera that on me and Kath. That was all hey. right, though. Oh, that was from in here. Oh, that's what... That was weird. That was from in that room, which is I next know door. it was from in that room, yes. I could hear it. That was too do do. Can we move now, Kieran? Yeah, you're free to move now, thanks. Okay, thank you. I hate this room. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. There's something really very just not right. Okay, why don't you go in the first room you're in there? I don't want to go in there on my own. Oh, no, I don't want to go in there on my own. I'll go in. They are. Kath, I'll go with Kath. Kath? Something just got on my head and it came through. Oh my god, horrible. It was physical. Don't touch me again. Shut my legs. I've just gone really tired. Like, like. Were you through mud? Yeah, like, like, the, like, I'm really tired. Like, like you collapse. That weird sensation that's always grabbing my legs. But you, you will get that humidity levels in here. I think are quite high, which gives you the impression that you're being touched. Oh, okay. Just to let you know, that's okay. the other side of it. Okay. Might be spiritual. Might be. I'm just. If me. Kieran was in here, that's what he'd say. I call upon all the persons here, in this place, this time. You see us standing here, holding hands. Come towards us now, all of you. I ask of you to come towards us now. Come into the centre of this circle. Come and talk to us. Is it me or I'm getting very cold? Is it around your leg? Cold. Yes. That's what, yeah. Come towards us now, all of you, please. Hear my voice and come towards us. Stand in the centre of this circle. Look at our faces. Try and touch us, talk to us, communicate with us. Let us know that you are amongst us now. All your bodies all laid out. What the, what the hell? hell was that? Did you catch that, whatever it was? 
Matt? Somebody's just moved outside. Is there anyone moving out there? There's nobody out here, Yvette, at least not on camera, and we're all uh, around the monitor. What's up, Kath? You just like blew at me. Are you all right? You all right, Tom? Yeah. Convinced that we were witness to something moving in the corridor, we continued to investigate this place through the rest of the night, but were unable to catch undisputable evidence to the haunting of Brinkburn Priory. But considering what we have experienced, what does Dr Kieran O'Keefe make of the night's events at Brinkburn? Brinkburn Priory was a great place to investigate because essentially here we had a location with two very different buildings. And by different, I mean very different atmosphere. You had a church and a large cavernous church with no furniture in it and huge ceilings. And then you had the other building, which the upper floors, genuinely scary, a, a little maze-like, but the cellar itself was very creepy. And from the moment that the team arrived, there seemed to be this spooky association and very negative feeling towards the actual cellar itself. Generally during the day, uh, weird sort of technical things happen. There are a couple of uh, battery drains during the day and some earlier investigations down in the cellar. Um, came up with some interesting noises, although we were able to debunk a couple of those uh, showing that it could be movement from upstairs. Generally though, most of the team were quite spooked by the cellar and a particular area of the cellar. Ah! What? What is Something it? went bang! Hello. This was exacerbated by some fantastic footage captured on the CCTV system. It was a mist. That's the best way to describe it. It was a mist that immediately the cynical part of me says it was dust that was kicked up from the floor because, of course, it was a very dusty place. However, this mist appeared to have kind of a, a life of its own. It, it was moving in a swirling motion at one point around one of the groups when they were conducting a vigil in the area. Very, very odd movement. I hesitate to say whether it's paranormal, but it's certainly the most unique movement uh, and unique dust movement that we've seen on any of the investigations. In the church, the most interesting phenomenon that happened there was actually the lights. Uh, they appeared to uh, go off and on of their own accord. And certainly at one point you actually see footage from one of the cameras pointed at the light switch to ensure that nobody was switching it on and off. Come on, if you're here, turn the lights on then. Open the gate, turn the lights on. There you go. Doesn't discount the possibility there could have been other switches, but I know the team tried to investigate the area and couldn't find any other light switches responsible for the phenomena. So, intriguing, whether it's paranormal or not, that's for you to decide. And intrigued is a word that I think will always come to mind when we recall our investigation of Brinkburn Priory. Certainly, our visit has been an eventful one, and if I may say, a haunting one. Until next time, sleep tight.